Jack's last question is, is there any indication that there were already some beings in rebellion to Yahweh prior to Genesis 1-3? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's nothing in the grammar of Genesis 1-1-3 that endorses a pre-Adamic race or a prior rebellion of Satan or anything like this. Again, my, my views on, on this have been out on the web for, for quite some time. Um, the uh, I'm trying to think where where if people went to the we, we, I should probably post this video as well. I, I have a video on uh, Genesis one one to three and how you know what what's going on there. The real issue is the grammar. It doesn't uh, maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really specifically pertain you know to what the question asks. So maybe I don't want to rabbit trail too much. But the idea of a gap theory, for instance, is just dead on arrival. There is no exegetical support for the gap theory, and the reason is is there, there are a lot of reasons for it, but the most simple reason. It is something we call Hebrew syntax, that is Hebrew grammar. Okay, Hebrew grammar, even word order, you know, how just how the grammar works. For the gap theory to have any chance of being reality, you have to read verses one through three in Genesis one in linear succession. You can't do that because of the way verse two begins. It's a Vav conjunction attached to a noun, which in every Hebrew grammar in the universe, okay. You know, every every example of Hebrew you're going to get, that is a disjunction. It is designed to break a sequence. Okay, that alone kills the gap theory. Uh, darkness, again, part of this is, oh, that's sinister. And there was judgment. Satan must have rebelled. God must have judged you know, Satan in the first creation. Then he has to recreate baloney. Okay, darkness is not of necessity, speaking of evil or sinister things in the Bible. First Kings 8.12 you know, Solomon says, the Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. Is God evil now because he's in darkness? No. I mean, other verses have Yahweh dwelling in darkness, Psalm 1811, Psalm 97. Two, three. This is fresh in my mind because this is actually an assignment that I give uh, for students in my Hebrew exegesis class at Liberty uh, that I'm actually grading right now. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't have any basis in Hebrew grammar and the Hebrew language. So if you believe the Bible's inspired in English, okay, you can get the gap theory. You just play with the English words. If you believe it was inspired in Hebrew, you're in trouble. 